here is what we're doing now is we are proving the channel coding here. So to remind ourselves, let's let's just break that back down again. Channel coding theorem. Every rate R less than capacity, there exists a sequence of two to the n R n codes with maximum probability of error. Worst probability or the worst code word in the code going to zero as n goes to infinity. So this is the statement that we're trying to prove. Um, at this point, um, it's worth pointing out the following sequence of codes. Now we have sort of a way of creating a sequence of code. Uh, when we think of a random code book, if I give you n and R, then you can write down, or at least you can come up with a random sequence of codes for each n. So basically as n grows, um, you will find a sequence of codes uh, based on the random codebook. So um, if you were confused before about the whole idea of a sequence of codes for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, that's basically what I mean now is a sequence of random codebooks. So here is the scenario. So, yes. So in this, uh, we don't do any of the source coding we saw before, but just we are assigning IID probabilities to sequences of length. And Precisely. So there is. A, we are assuming that we're assuming that um, uh, the source messages are all equally probable, and therefore um, there's no point in compressing them because they're already at entropy. At their best level. Yes. And what what's going to save us? You said last time is that if uh, these are in the typical set, yes, that's uh, immune to any um, operations, and it will guarantee that they're unique. Yes. Somehow I remember that there's a uniqueness statement on this. Um, that's right. So basically, as long as there are only so many code, code words, um, as long as the number of code words is limited, then the, the idea of uh, a joint typicality, there will only be one channel, uh, or one channel input that's jointly typical with the channel output. Is that, uh, that's, I think that's what I said last time. Um, so, here is the communication scenario. Okay, first, a random code book is generated and shared Transmitter and receiver, or excuse me, encoder and decoder. This assumption is quite typical in um, in the communications literature. Basically, we allow any amount of pre-communication. So, uh, basically, the uh, um, the basis of this assumption is that the transmitter and receiver can always agree on strategy beforehand.
1, 2, and so on up to 2 to the nr. So remember, this was my this was my set of possible messages, which I represent with the integers one, two, and so on up to two to the n r. And basically, uh, I'm going to pick one of those uniformly at random and transmit it. So we're assuming that these are um, um, these are these messages are all equiprobable. So there's no point in um, the message set is already at entropy, and there's no point in compressing it. There is a theorem which we will. I'm not sure if we'll have time to cover in this class, but there's a theorem that says um, if you compress the message set first into a set of compressed messages, and then use um, uh, and then use an error correcting code on top of that, it makes no difference. In other words, you can separate those two tasks. Uh, there's no there's no gain in jointly um, doing compression and transmission. Okay, three. Transmit the WF row of C, i.e., uh, there will be X and W. So the W is code word. So we've gone from uh, codebook generation, message production, encoding. We've, we've, we've gone to the, uh, uh, the channel observations at the input to the decoder. Next step is decoding. So the receiver guesses uh, which message was sent. And uh, we will let the receiver's guess be equal to W hat. W hat can take values in well, firstly, 1, 2, and so on up to 2 to the nr, but we also allow 0. Remember, that 0 letter signifies a decoding failure. In other words, the, uh, the receiver is giving up. So, um, if you've taken a course on digital communication, you know that the optimal rule for, uh, for detection is the maximum likelihood rule. Unfortunately, the maximum likelihood rule is very difficult to analyze. So we're going to use an alternative rule, which is suboptimal, but uh, it will turn out in the end that it won't matter. So we're going to use what's called a typical set decoder. Typical set decoders don't actually exist because they're too complicated, but they're very easy to analyze. Um, we are going to choose 